what are the ligaments of the liver there are mainly five ligaments and all are peritoneal folds but some author they describe ligaments into two broad categories one is the peritoneal folds which is called the false ligaments and others are true ligaments which is formed by the any embryological remnant or condensation of some connective tissue so in the liver also you will get these two types of ligaments there are a few uh, peritoneal folds they are called false ligaments and some are embryological uh, remnant they are called the true ligaments so i am showing you the different ligaments of the liver look at this liver here on the anterior surface as well as on the superior surface there is a ligament can you see the attachment of a ligament this one here also you will get this ligament this is falciform ligament falciform means sickle shaped it is looks like this so this concave margin actually this concave margin it is attached along the liver like this along the anterior surface and superior surface and this convex margin it is attached to the anterior abdominal wall under surface of the diaphragm up to the umbilicus so can you follow so this ligament is having two borders one is a concave border like the concavity of my fingers this one attached with the liver like this and the convex border it is attached with the diaphragm and abdominal wall up to umbilicus so this is called the falciform ligament and it is having two layers while it is approaching towards the liver it divides into like this divides into two wall two layers like this coming like this and on the surface it diverges so there are two layers of the falciform ligament the so one layer going towards the right side one going towards the left side the right layer of the diverging falciform ligament it forms a superior layer of coronary ligament which forms the upper boundary of the bare area of the liver and the left diverging layer is uh, of the falciform ligament forms the anterior layer of left triangular ligament this is left triangular ligament it is having two layer anterior layer and posterior layer this anterior layer is nothing but the continuation of the diverging left layer of falciform ligament so left layer left triangular ligament and right layer it forms the coronary ligament and this ligament contains the this ligament it is another ligament it is called ligamentum teres hepatis i am showing you this is the one ligament and this is the content of the falciform ligament it extends up to the umbilicus but this ligament is not a fold of peritoneum it is the remnant of left umbilical vein this one and other ligaments i already told you the superior layer of coronary ligament and the ligament is the inferior layer of coronary ligament the superior layer and inferior layer they fuse together on the right side and from the right triangular ligament which is attached to the diaphragm here but from where this inferior layer of the coronary ligament comes so to describe this i must say the lesser omentum which is attached with the liver the lesser omentum one side it attached to the stomach which is below from stomach and duodenum to the liver hepatodudinal and hepatogastric ligament is the two parts of lesser omentum so the lesser omentum attached here on the under surface of the liver where it is attached you see this is one fissure is there on the inferior surface and another fissure is there on the posterior surface so the ligament or lesser omentum it attaches along the floor of this fissure for ligamentum venosa and along the leaves of the porta hepatis so this is the porta hepatis so the shape of this ligament is l shaped you see this is one limb this is another limb so it is a l shaped the vertical limb along the floor of the fissure for ligamentum venosa and the horizontal limb along the leaves of the 
porta hepatis. It is a right free margin of the lesser omentum. So, this lesser omentum, when it diverges towards the right side, it forms the inferior layer of the coronary ligament. So, inferior layer of coronary ligament, it is derived from the lesser omentum. And on the left side, the lesser omentum, it extends as the posterior layer of the left triangular ligament. So, in summary, if I uh, tell you how the left triangular ligament is formed, the answer will be the anterior layer of the left triangular ligament, it is formed by the left layer of the falcinal ligament and posterior layer by the left layer of the lesser omentum. They fuse to form the left triangular ligament in air extends up to the diaphragm and behind this left triangular ligament is the abdominal part of the esophagus and fundus of the stomach. And on the right side, the superior layer of coronal ligament, it is derived from the left layer, sorry, right layer of the falcium ligament and inferior layer, it is formed by the right uh, layer of the lesser omentum. So, lesser omentum, falcium ligament, they fused on the right side and from the right triangular ligament, which is attached to the diaphragm and the right kidney like that on the right side. So, all together what we got? There are five ligaments which are formed by the peritoneal fold. One is falcible ligament containing this ligamentum pedis hepatis. One is the left angular ligament. One is superior layer of coronal ligament. One is inferior layer of coronal ligament. One is right angular ligament. And on the inferior surface is the lesser momentum here. But there are two other ligaments which are not from the peritoneal folds. This are sometimes called the true ligaments. What are these? One is, I already told you this one. This is ligamentum pedis hepatis, which is formed by the obliterated left umbilical vein. And on the posterior surface, here, there is another ligament is there in this group. That, that ligament is the ligamentum venosum, which is the remnant of ductus venosus. This one. So, this ligamentum venosum and ligamentum teres, these two are the true ligaments and they are found by these some embryological remnants. So, all these are ligaments of the liver.